look at it, so good morning. So these are strange times that we are living in. So I'm about to go on my morning, my morning run, my one bit of daily exercise I get to go on and I need this time to think, think about how I can sort of keep producing tours for everyone to um, to consume and how I can still get London history out there when I haven't got the ability to go out and take any photos. But what I'm thinking of doing is sort of starting uh, a weekly weekly vlog to keep yourself updated on different things and to have a sort of weekly zine that I make and I sort of make uh, live on camera and with each zine focusing on a different music venue. I don't want to just be staring at the camera and explaining um, the history of just me me there with no building in the back I'm just sat in my flat because quite frankly that would be pretty that would be pretty boring so I think make, make a zine about a different historical site creativity it's important so this building site is where the Astoria used to stand um, it's up by Tottenham Court Road station and I took this picture on a really gloomy winter winter day. I quite like it as an image because it shows all the uh, builders uh, helping construct these new these new buildings that are going going up. And I mean, it shows how much London is changing. It ch shows how much Soho is changing. I mean, this is where the Astoria used to stand. It's just sad. I don't know if there's a bigger symbol of gentrification than than this. The sort of construction of office blocks where this venue once where this venue once stood. It's actually where I f saw my first ever ever gig as sort of 11, 12 year old. My dad took me to see a band called Wishbone Ash, um, a sort of prog rock prog rock band. And he persuaded uh, security to let me in, in, even though I was underage. And this was before there was a um, smoking ban. We went up onto the balcony. We had to be near the top, um, near the top floor uh, by the fire escape. So if any anyone came in to check the venue we could go out head out that way so we weren't um caught and the venue didn't get sued for letting people in underage but anyway it was what a great first gig to go to at this sort of iconic iconic venue and so it's changing beyond beyond recognition really so before it became a music venue it began as a as a warehouse and there were many warehouses around the soho area that would sort of cater for the rag trade and have loads of different types of sort of um, fabrics and clothing in them that would then be stocking those department stores and all those shops along Oxford Street. Um, and then it became a cinema and eventually became a ballroom. Finally it was opened as a nightclub in 1985 and um, from 1985 up until the 2000s it's been a music, been a music venue. So many iconic people have um, played there. I mean, n people such as David Bowie, Generation X, Nirvana, Less and Jake. I mean, Less and Jake have a fantastic live album that was recorded there, and Frank Turner, just to name a name a few. And that really sort of shows what an important venue has been. On this page, on my sort of little little zine I've put together here, I've decided to put uh, two verses of a Frank Turner song where he cites um, cites the Astoria, and it really was. A venue that was sort of central to part of his early um, early career, and he sort of talks about it closing, it closing, and new venues opening up, and we just have to hope that as more venues close in London, others others do pop up in up in different places. Um, so, so yeah, that gives us a little bit of a brief history of the uh, of the Astoria. Hope you've in, hope you've enjoyed this, found this a little bit a little bit interesting. Um, try and think of a creative way to get history history across. We'll be dropping these hopefully um, every Monday. If you've got any ideas or anything you'd like to like to do with these, please send those in. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.